In order to demonstrate the usage of Resilience 4J, I'm going to leverage a Spring Boot application and I'm going to use the Spring Boot version 3 to use circuit breakers using the Resilience 4J library. Resilience 4J is a library using which you can implement rate limiters, rate trial logics, circuit breakers, bulkheads and other useful utilities. In this particular video, we are going to leverage circuit breakers from the Resilience 4J. This is how the architecture goes. Before getting into the hands-on, I want to brief about what are circuit breakers at a high level. If you don't know what are circuit breakers, you can take a look at my video on circuit breakers, but I'm going to just give a gist at a high level for the next few minutes. Imagine I'm going to have an application which is going to be called as the Resilience 4J service. I have an API called Activity. Uh, I got bored, so I use something called as Board API. It's a public API. Every time I hit the Board API, it returns a random activity which I can do if I am bored. Let's say when the Board API goes down, the Resilience 4J service will not have any message or activity from the Board API. In that particular case, what happens to our application is we return exceptions and we keep getting errors until the board api is up using circuit breaker you can either stop the frequent calls to the board api you can reduce the number of calls which you are sending to the board api or you can also have a fallback method let's say if the board api is down you can tell people to watch tech primers youtube channel right so that's again a fallback method now what happens in a circuit breaker and how the circuit breaker works is by default, when things are successful, when the Resilience 4J service connects to the board API, the circuit is closed. So that's a success path or a happy path. Whenever there is a failure from the Resilience 4J to an external API or some other service, in this case, it's board API, then the circuit goes into an open state after a particular period of time or maybe after, let's say, three or four failures. Once the circuit is open, every new request which is coming to the Resilience 4J gets rejected by default. So what it basically means is we fail fast instead of going and calling the board API. What could be happening behind the scenes is board API could be coming up and we don't want to bombard the board API unnecessarily with our service calls. In this particular case, circuit breakers are very helpful because it reduces the number of calls which are going to do by opening the circuit. So it's similar to how we have the on or off switch in our electrical appliances. Once a particular threshold time has been breached, then the circuit breaker tries to go to a state called half open. So half open is the state where we try to send a request to the third party service or the dependent service to see if it is successful. If the message is successful and if let's say we have configured, let's say two or three calls should be successful to go from half open to open, then after the third successful call, the service state goes to the closed state like we had in the initial stage. So every request comes to the service, the Resiliency 4J service, and it goes to the board API. If there is a failure based on the threshold, it moves to the open state and all the requests will be failing. And based on again the timeout, it opens up half by going into a half open state where some of the requests goes through. And if there is a failure, it immediately closes. And if let's say the threshold is reached, then it goes to a closed state. Now let's see how we can implement this using the Spring Boot version 3. I have already created an application with exactly the same feature just to save our time on just using the circuit breaker. I created an activity controller. The activity controller has the board API. This is the board API. Whenever I hit the board API, I get a new random activity. So I'm just having an endpoint slash activity. I just created a method get mapping. Uh, it's doing a rest template dot get entity using the board API. I created a POJO, which is the activity. This is how the message comes back whenever we hit the REST API from the board API. So I'm just using the same POJO and I'm converting that particular board API response into an activity type. So the response activity is stored in an activity object and I'm just printing the get activity in the log message. I'm also creating the REST template in the bean injection here. So by default, REST template needs to be created so that we can use the same instance. And we have auto wired that using the constructor injection here. Now, let me start this application. I also don't have any properties or YAMLs configured. So by default, it's going to use the 
port 8080 and just to show the dependencies i have the spring boot starter actuator dependency and the starter web dependency i'm using jdk 17 and spring version 3.0.6 let me start this particular application and i can see the application got started and it's running successfully now let me go to the browser so i can hit the local host 8080 slash activity so the moment i hit the 8080 activity you can see that there is a random activity which is shown here it says draw and color a mandala so that's one particular activity if i refresh again it says go to the nail salon that's another activity if i keep on refreshing there is going to be new activity which is going to be random that's what the board api is all about so if you see here it says binge watch a trending series now what happens if i stop my internet connection so the moment i stop my internet connection i don't have connectivity to that particular board api now what happens i'm getting a white label error which is a 500 internal server error this is not a good way to expose or return back when somebody else is calling our service isn't it so this is where we can use circuit breaker to protect our service whenever something goes down we either do a fallback or we try to do without a fallback by enabling circuit breakers so let's go and enable circuit breaker in the code so let me stop the application in order to enable the circuit breaker which is coming from the resilience 4j i'm going to leverage the circuit breaker dependency so i'll just say so i'm injecting the resilience 4j dependencies for that we need two different dependencies one is the spring boot starter aop and we are using the io github resilience 4j with spring boot 3 version and the version number is 2.0.2 .2. so i am using these two dependencies newly and going back to the controller i can start adding the annotation to enable circuit breaker on this particular endpoint so i can do a let me do add circuit breaker we can provide a name for this particular circuit breaker when we have multiple methods then it will be easy for us to identify which circuit breaker got triggered so let me do this so the name of the circuit breaker is random activity and there is something called fallback method if you see there is a fallback method we can give a fallback method i'm going to give a fallback method let's call this method as fallback random activity so this method should be created by us let me create that particular method so whenever there is an issue within this method when we fall back to this guy it will call this method if we don't define a fallback then obviously there is going to be like the same exception 500 whatever we see but let's say when we add the fallback we should be able to give a random response for the caller and also the method signature should be having throwable whenever there is an exception when the circuit breaker gets triggered with a fallback there will be a throwable so you can identify the throwable and use that throwable to identify what type of uh, exception it is and things like that but here i am not going to do that i'm just going to simply return um watch a video from tech primers so if there is no activity coming from our board api i'm saying that go and watch a video from tech primers right this is the fallback method which we are adding so code wise it's pretty simple it's the same way you would have done in the previous versions of uh, spring boot just add an annotation give a name have a fallback method with respect to adding properties we will have to add properties in the yaml configurations so let me go and add those configuration i've preloaded all the configuration properties in the shortcut so if you see here these are the properties which we are going to add i'm calling my application as resilience 4j demo i'm also adding some json show the, to show that message should be perfect i've added some management endpoints to enable and expose all our details also i have enabled the circuit breaker uh, health check endpoints so whenever we have the actuator health triggered we will be able to see circuit breaker related information in the actuator endpoints same way i have enabled all the uh, management endpoints by doing this now coming to the resilience 4j specific properties i have added a default configuration if you want to have individual circuit breaker specific configuration you can do that i have just provided a default instead of that you can provide your circuit breaker name so i have added a register health indicator true that means this particular um, by default all my circuit breakers will be added into the health check uh, results also there are different properties these different properties signify different uh, 
features let me go back to the documentation you can see that failure rate threshold so the default value is 50 percentage and also notice that this is configured in percentage so 50 percentage means half the requests if they fail then we are going to open the circuit uh, we have the same configuration here we are saying that okay if half of my requests are failing then just open the circuit there is a sliding window type this is basically the configuration to record the outcome of the calls when there is a circuit breaker which is closed so you can have either time based sliding window or you can have count based sliding window so there is something called sliding window type which you can define and also you can define the size so i have a default size of 10 the next one is permitted number of calls in the half open state so this is a property using which you can configure how many requests can we allow for the service to go through before trying with the real exact service so this signifies that if i configure 10 that means if my circuit is open then i will allow 10 calls to go into a half open state that means 10 calls will be like allowed during that particular time period of course there are other properties which you can configure do take a look at the documentation i will leave the link for the documentation you can take a look at the config property and define what you need based on your requirement for now i have just defined these values you can take the same from the git repository from the description below now let's go and start the application so we can identify if the application is going to work or not with the new circuit breaker configs apart from the add annotation circuit breaker we have not added much we have added the properties and also we added the form xml change now the application is up let me go back and start the server now notice here i have the internet connectivity resume so i do have like if let's say i hit the activity it says resolve a problem you have been putting off that's a random um, activity if i refresh again it says go to local thrift shop um, again i can get new new activity every single time now i will do the same again i'll stop the internet connectivity so my apis are going to fail right now if you see here automatically i'm getting watch a video from tech primers that means there was a fallback right and that fallback passed on the request to my fallback method unfortunately i didn't have a log statement here but i did it has gone there that's why i did not see anything there was an exception which was received by the application and it returned a fallback immediately and you you, you can see that every time i call it just directly going to the fallback right and if i resume once my wi-fi connectivity is resumed i can see that it's going back to the exact api so this is where circuit breakers are very powerful when we are exposing our api to our consumers we don't send any exception message instead we can fall back to a different method sometimes you don't want to fall back to a different method in that case you can configure um, a particular exception which we can throw back to our clients so now coming back to our health checks so let's look at the actuator health check and see what it returns now if you see here the actuator returns status up there is also a circuit breaker status which is like circuit half open the circuit half open is because we went into a failure and then we resumed from that failure right that's the reason why it is half open and you need to go through three successful calls to go into a success state so i have to like call my activity more number of times right then my circuit will be like open so let me if you see here now the half open state went and it says that status is up and also the state of the circuit breaker is closed now so if i again show you by making it down if i call my application it says that uh, it goes to the fallback now if i refresh you can see that the circuit state is open now here and also the status of the entire random activity it shows circuit open it also shows how many requests fail for example uh, i have a failure threshold of 50 percentage slow rate is whatever um, we don't bother about the other fields for now it says that okay there is a failure and because of which the circuit is open now the more requests we call the more the state data gets changed so you can see that buffered calls three and after that sliding window period it just gets reset to zero so if i uh, refresh again see it got refreshed to zero now let me resume back the internet connectivity and let's see what happens to the result now you can see that it should go into a half open state because see here it went into half open state because one request succeeded now i will do more request right 
three, four, five requests. So this has exceeded the threshold. Now it should go to an closed state. So you can see that the requests are in the closed state now. This is how you can enable the circuit breakers using a Spring Boot application. You can leverage Resilience 4J for it. The code for this is again in the GitHub repository. You can go and check my GitHub repository where I have all the source code present. There are also other libraries like retries, bulkheads and etc. which we can leverage from Resilience 4J. If you want me to make a video on retries or something else, do let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.